let's talk because you, you touched on it. The, uh, the motivating factor in, in the past has, has been fairly easy. It's been an optimistic environment. So when people mm -hmm. are reporting hard facts that are, are very positive, they sure. tend to get praised for it and rewarded for it. Now you're expecting people to give you the hard facts even though they're negative. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, of course, I think everybody sort of uh, instinctively mm -hmm. uh, resists being the messenger of bad news because we all know that the messenger gets shot, right? Yes. Uh, so how do you ensure in the organization, how do you make sure uh, that, that the information that you're getting and that people have the incentive to tell you even bad news uh, and they don't feel like they're going to be yeah. in any way? Uh, uh, it's a bit, bit more difficult for me uh, to talk about this point because I kind of inherited the team last year mm -hmm. and uh, I have a very good um, mix of managers that uh, there are those who can challenge all the other uh, people on board including me mm -hmm. telling the hard facts which is very good and that's what I was uh, I've been trying to do um, in Hungary for the past uh, eight years that uh, to have a team of people who won't be only saying yes and uh, be silent when there are difficult times because that's that's what matters the most that you have uh, those colleagues managers who are working with you that they are opened and they come with the new ideas and they challenging the status quo that's very important and uh, luckily enough here uh, we do have those who were challenging the status quo during the good times. So now um, I really appreciate that uh, they come with the, with the hard facts that showing, that shows that uh, there, is, uh, there is a need of uh, reaction. But um, personally, I do really appreciate if I have a people who challenging really the others because then it can really move the business forward. So. Uh, of course, like in any other uh, company, you have people who are afraid of uh, losing the jobs when you're talking about uh, make more efficiency of the core competencies. And I think it's uh, even at those companies which works well, these times it's uh, uh, time to go for more efficiencies. Um, this is something which, uh, uh, luckily enough, we do not have those issues because the team was kind of uh, lean mm -hmm. and efficient even before. Um, nevertheless, you could feel in, because the growth of our business is uh, in our restaurants, mm -hmm. uh, you could feel that uh, the franchise partners and the, the restaurant managers of the company stores, uh, they had to really, due to having less clients, less customers in the stores, uh, schedule less people on the shifts to keep the uh, the efficiency. So uh, then that's important that the long term you have people who are working full time and who are working uh, a part time. So you need to have a good mixture that mm -hmm. you can really balance the the fixed and variable cost. Mm -hmm. That's that's very important. Uh, but so far we uh, we didn't have an issue of have to. Yeah. Uh, or being forced to uh, fire people, yeah. so that's maybe um, maybe um, a different compared different compared to some other uh, businesses. When you have a drop of I don't know twenty, thirty, fifty percent of the of the revenues, etc. So uh, here um, for our business, when we have products for different level. Of customers, those who has less purchase power, and for uh, for those who has more more money in their pocket, so uh, we can offer different products. So we this year we could really uh, keep them coming back, but again, uh, the hard fact is uh, fact is that uh, the bottom line is hit from uh, due because of the uh, uh, the external factors mm -hmm. which I mentioned in the beginning. So that's difficult to to manage, mm -hmm. um, but somehow uh, we could succeed at the moment. So, do you find yourself 
uh, one looking for other sources of information. And I'm sure you have sort of standard reports that you're sure. looking at all mm -hmm. the time. And, mm -hmm. um, one, do you try to find different information? Mm -hmm. uh, and do you find yourself challenging the reports more, asking questions, asking if people have different opinions? more now than you did say two years ago? Mm -hmm. Sure, definitely. Yeah. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, we have kind of standard uh, um, questionnaires, analysis, which now we do more in deep and more often. Mm -hmm. So the frequency of, um, of gathering such information is, uh, is more because we feel like that uh, the environment was changing more rapidly and, and uh, in a short time, yeah. while in the past when there is a success, uh, economy is growing, it's more kind of stable, yeah. more organized. Uh, and uh, so we, those tools we have for gathering the information, we use them more often. Plus, uh, we're trying to get the new information from the new resources. Now, what I found difficult is that uh, when you want to gather this information, you look maybe for more than you need yeah. resources, then you don't get the same picture. So uh, uh, different uh, analysis showing you completely different figures than many others. So then you need to really uh, use a lot of uh, uh, common sense, uh, not only to rely on research and analysis telling you that this is what will happen or this is what is happening. So yeah. you need to look on, on the field what's really going on and ask the people who are on the floor. So, yeah. And what about spending time with your suppliers, uh, your, your regular business partners? Spending more time now uh, trying to understand a little bit more about their business, trying to understand how they're doing? Uh, I think we do spend a lot of time with suppliers because yeah. um, it's a uh, growth of our business, business, absolutely. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. We spend now more time with them to find an efficiency in supply chain, especially yeah. in a supply chain uh, field that's uh, uh, basically one of the only ways how we can really uh, uh, find out how to control the cost better because this is 60-70% of our revenues, the percentages uh, come from the, the supply chain field. So yes, we do have, they are under pressure obviously, uh, but it's doing uh, quite well. Unfortunately, it can't really offset the the loss of like the uh, the uh, devaluation of uh, Czech crown. So and uh, from next year the the VAT. So this is um, a direct impact in 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 the business. So that's challenging, and uh, uh, they are more under focus uh, suppliers, and uh, they know. But uh, we have long term uh, relationship. And uh, we have um, huge alignment that uh, I told you 80% of the materials comes from out, outside of uh, uh, Czech Republic. So uh, there is lots of synergies with other markets. Uh, uh, and as I said, we may be one of the, the businesses which are still growing, and especially in Europe, when you look at our business, very positive and very good, uh, good growth comparing to the situation where we are now. So um, it's true that uh, business in Czech Republic for us is different than the business in Western Europe because over there uh, people are shifting their behavior. Mm -hmm. They're shifting from uh, um, uh, high-end and luxury restaurants to more casual dining right. and maybe the, the quick service restaurant businesses. So that's... In that was already here, right? It was more that there were people were already sort of doing the cash. Absolutely, so absolutely. So in Western Europe, it helps a lot. While here in Czech Republic, we don't see that yet. Yes, that. absolutely. So yeah, yeah. Uh, with the with the culture of uh, the typical uh, bars and pubs in Czech Republic, so that's uh, that's something which is challenging for us to really get benefit out of that.